Hi everyone, it's Amy here from the blog I Think Therefore I Teach. Welcome back to Criminology. In today's video, I'm going to go through assessment criteria 1.2. So let's get it started. I'm just going to make myself smaller so that you can, whoops, so you can see the PowerPoint. Okay, so assessment criteria 1.2. This is explain the reasons that certain crimes are unreported. Please find my previous video for assessment criteria 1.1. This goes over the crimes that you need to know for your uh, brief and for your assessment. Whereas this video goes through the reasons why certain crimes are unreported. Within this topic, you need to be able to explain reasons why certain crimes are unreported and then also give detailed examples of why some crimes got unreported. Now, as you will find out on your course very, very quickly, that detailed examples are extremely important. These can be specific examples to everyday life or they can be more generalised examples, but examples are very, very important in order to hit the top brackets of your marks. There are two main reasons why some crimes are unreported. The first is personal. Within personal, you have fear, shame, disinterest, and not affected. So there are four within personal. Within social and cultural, there are lack of knowledge, complexity, lack of media interest, lack of public concern, and culture balance. So there are five in total for that one. You need to know each of these and have written up a little bit on each of them, and that's what this video will go through. When it comes to your brief uh, and your assessment that you will do, you need to be able to link your previous talked about crimes from uh, the brief that you've done for 1.1 so that might be between one and three crimes that you have to talk about and then for each of them you have to talk about one personal and one socio-cultural so for example if you spoke about white collar crime in your 1.1 you would then need to link one personal to white collar crime and one socio-cultural to uh, white collar crime and then if you have to do a, a second example or even a third example to so a second crime and a third crime from the brief you then would link it to another personal and social cultural another personal and social cultural you are welcome to use the same one so you could do shame or you could do lack of knowledge that is fine but you have to be specific to how it links to the brief that you've been given you will not have the brief until your actual exam another area that you need to also be aware of is when it comes to unreported crime, this is the idea that for a crime to be reported in the first place, it has to be against the law. Somebody has to have actually seen the crime being committed and the police have to write it down. As you will find as we continue on through this course, is that actually sometimes crimes are reported but then they're not recorded by the police. But at this time, all we're looking at is this idea of unreported. And when it comes to unreported crime, this then makes what is called the dark figure of crime. This idea of how much unreported crime there is. So within personal, you have fear. Now, fear is the idea of why somebody might not report a crime. It's because of the consequences for themselves as the individual or of a family as well. So particularly in the case of things like domestic abuse, honour or hate crimes, so your individual crimes, fear might be involved. There's also shame and embarrassment. So especially in cases involving sex crimes, people might feel shame or embarrassment about coming forward, so therefore do not report these crimes. Disinterest, people just don't care. People just are not interested in reporting certain crimes like vagrancy or homelessness. How many times have you walked past somebody that is homeless or a begging on the streets? This is against the law. Do you report it? Chances are no. Um, how many times have you come across um, people uh, smoking marijuana, for example? This again is against the law, but not many people will actually call and ring the police. Why? Because there's a level of disinterest there. Finally, the other personal reason why crimes go unreported is because uh, they, don't, they aren't affected by it. So if a crime doesn't affect a person, they might not think it has anything to do with them. So if a car is stolen or there's criminal damage or again vagrancy, the homeless person is not affecting you. Uh, they are affecting your life and therefore people do not report them. 
So in class one, we learned about these different um, types of personal reasons why uh, uh, crimes got reported. We had a look at um, three different scenarios. These are make, uh, made up scenarios. So the idea of the first one of shame, uh, this is the idea of Michelle waking up in somebody else's um, home after going on a night out and then going home with somebody. And so we had a look at why Michelle might not tell the police about the situation, why maybe she should tell the police and that shame that she might feel. Disinterest, we had the idea of Sam who lives in an inner city um, and sees uh, people in the, 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 the young people in the park, uh, especially during school holidays, uh, maybe smoking cannabis, etc. Why might Sam not report it, but then who else may report it instead? And then finally, fear, uh, this idea that John is on a night out with his girlfriend, uh, has a little bit of a disagreement with some men in a pub, um, and have a little bit of a scuffle, but nobody is really has seriously harmed. Um, why might John not come forward and tell the police? Why might the bartender as well, the other sorry, not uh, report the assault, etc.? So we had a really good discussion based on these different scenarios and applied this idea of shame, disinterest and fear to them. Also, what you might want to have a look at as we move into social and cultural reasons, so this is the second half, the social and cultural, uh, the first one being lack of knowledge. Sometimes, some people may be unaware that a crime has been committed, so a person may be unaware um, of how to go about reporting a crime. So, for example, cyberbullying or hate speech, would you know how to actually report these crimes? So, what I ask my students to do is to have a look on that website and have a look at how social media's deal with and cope with reporting these crimes, making it more easier or easier to be able to report these crimes. Second social, oh apologies. Second, social and cultural is complexity. Sometimes the crime itself is so complicated, for example, fraud or white collar crime, that an ordinary person, that's you and I, might not actually realize what's even going on. So white collar crime, money laundering. And so my students looked at this scenario um, where for two and a half years, an accountant, a construction services company boss and a payroll administrator defrauded HM Revenue and Customs, HMRC of VAT, income tax, and national insurance contribution deductions worth 6.9 million. The men hid their fraud by using a complex network of companies and bank accounts. Clients of the company were charged VAT on the services provided. Employees of the company had tax deducted from their pay, but neither the VAT nor the taxes ever made it to the HMRC. The company supplied short-term contractors to the construction industry, often providing hundreds of workers at a time. Um, but rather than pay the tax and national insurance to HMRC, HMRC, the three men stole the money to fund lavish lifestyles. So using this made up scenario, my students then, uh, so this is adapted uh, from the HMRC press release 24th of October 2016, um, my students then discussed what, why would it be difficult um, in this case to see what crimes had been committed and then why this type of crime is likely to go unreported. So we discussed how complicated this is and how when you've got so many workers it's very and you've obviously got high turnover of staff you've got a lot of different uh, short-term contracts etc it's very hard to keep a picture it's very hard to follow and so um it's very it's easier for the people to organize taking this money so people paying their taxes people paying towards their national insurance but then for these people not to then t send it to the hmrc but for somebody to actually see what they are doing, that's far harder when they've got a high turnover of staff within that business. Social and cultural reasons continued. We have lack of media interest. Some crimes are not widely publicised or discussed. Uh, this results in little public interest. And we had a look at the Terena Burke uh, hashtag Me Too campaign as a, a way of bringing attention to um, uh, sexual crimes or um, you know vulnerabilities and actually making this so this this has been going on for the hashtag me too has been going on for over 10 years now um, and how Terena Burke started this why she started this and how she wanted to bring more public and more media interest to these areas so do check that one out as your example 
Lack of current public concern. If an offence is not considered a real crime, it might go unreported. So, for example, downloading legal material, smoking cannabis. These are crimes that are crimes, but people don't really see them as that deviant. So deviancy, going back to the previous topic. In this sense, people don't go out of their way to report them because they're not high up on people's public concern. And we had a look at this scenario presented in the independent report, uh, an independent report in 2016, that 47% of the people in the UK supported licensed sale of cannabis. Part of the reason for support of the public uh, and for some politicians is an estimated 1 billion in tax that will be generated from sales. This would also mean this money is not in the hands of criminals. Um, and in class, we discussed these four questions. We looked at the advantages of legalizing cannabis. Um, so, for example, making some money in the tax uh, for it, making it legitimized. Uh, we also looked at the idea of when cannabis is legal, then it means that um, it, it, you, you are um, smoking or using something that's been properly tested and secured. So, you're, you, you know, uh, there's no opportunity for it to be something that you don't know what it is. Um, what reasons might there be for not supporting legalization? We went down the route of how when you tax it, it then becomes more expensive. So people might still dot the black mark to keep it cheaper. Um, what do you think would be the impact on crime if cannabis was legalized? Uh, and again, we looked at what other countries that have legalized uh, cannabis and whether how their crime is being affected. Um, so we discussed things like this and how actually crime might not be, um, you know, crime might not be affected. Um, and then uh, what other activities can you suggest that are against the law, um, but the public may not be concerned about and again we looked at things like uh, vagrancy downloading illegal music etc so it's important to have these scenarios these examples even though they're not specific real life cases they still and obviously this one does draw upon statistics which is always important but it's just giving these examples to back up what you're saying and really exploring these questions and these ideas in your in your exam Finally, when it comes to social and cultural reasons, you have culture-bound crime. Now, these are crimes which are can be acceptable in certain sections of society, such as honour killings. Amina is 14 and her family are from Pakistan. She was born in the UK and has never been to Pakistan. She is the eldest of three sisters. Amina wants to stay on at school and get a career. Amina's parents are very strict. Recently, her parents have been planning a trip to Pakistan. They say that this is so Amina can meet some of her family. Despite this claim, Amina is concerned about the trip. She has heard about cases where families have taken their daughters to Pakistan to be married and she is worried the trip is for her to get married. We discussed this idea of why would the family plans for Amina be a crime and how if Amina is correct in what she is uh, thinking. Obviously, you have forced marriage there, um, which is illegal. Um, and potentially, if she does go against the family, a potential honour killing them. Um, or And the idea of um, kidnap. You are kidnapping if you're forcing her to do it against her will. Why might Amina be unwilling to report the crime? Again, we discussed this in class. It's the idea that would Amina know how to report the crime? Um, she's only doing this based on a hunch, so she has actual no evidence that this will go ahead. Um, she may be unwilling because, again, it's against her family, um, etc. Okay, so hopefully that video has helped you um very very quick run through of the different areas but again in your in your exam in your formal assessment that you will be doing uh, probably the around christmas time it is important to be very clear with these keep it very structured um, keep an eye on time because you have very little time to really go through the Im immense amount of information that you have to cover so you can use subheadings you can keep it nice and clear so a bit like the slides just have a um, have a subheading per slide that we've done for example so this can be for any of the topics that, that we do from here on but as I said at the beginning um, all you need to do for this is you will have one to three crimes that you uh, mentioned in your brief you will be asked to talk about one to three of those crimes in the brief and again that will be on the assessment when you see it in uh, around Christmas and then what you have to do is you have to link one personal and one social cultural reason to each of them.
So you can use the same personal and the same social and cultural, but you have to be specific to the crime that you're talking about. So if it is on a killing, for example, is your crime that you're talking about, you link a personal reason why it might go unreported, such as fear, to that specific honour uh, killing. And then you might do culture bound as to why it goes unreported for your social and cultural. I hope you found this useful, everybody. Um, I will keep you posted. Hopefully, 1.3 will be coming out shortly. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching, everybody. Bye for now.